The questions of what makes tech art collaborations successful are something we try to answer in this podcast. Who are these business leaders who has this passion for the arts and commit to it in their business environments? Today's guest, Dr. Uli Schmitz, will speak about how he connects artists and techies, why it is essential, and why we should rethink the measurement of art business initiatives. Let's start. We are being told to choose between the left and right brain, between studying art and engineering, between creative and analytical thinking. Our society tells us that art and business are not connected. But what if society is wrong? What if it misleading us? The good news is that understanding what art is can bring us to a new revelation. Art does matter in innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship. And with the help of this podcast and its guests, you as well will learn that art is not an object. Art is a mindset. You are listening to the Artian Podcast with me, Nir Hindi. Hey, podcast listeners. Thanks for coming back. My name is Nir, the founder of the Artian a consultancy and training company that applies an art mindset in the business environment. Why? Because art is not an object. Art is a way of thinking, and a very innovative one. This podcast explores how art and artists influence organizations. And today, you will hear firsthand how Startup Accelerator brought in artists. I met our guest today, Dr. Uli Schmitz, a few years back in Berlin. We immediately clicked. You will hear why in a second. Dr. Schmitz is leading a few initiatives inside the Axel Springer Group, the German digital publishing house, also the largest one in Europe. From corporate venturing to startup accelerator and up to a new academy. But it is his passion for the arts and the collaborations he builds between artists and techies that connected us both. Hey Uli, welcome to the Artian Podcast. Hi, welcome Nir. I'm happy to be with you today. Great. It has been a long time since I visited you in Berlin and we had such a nice experience. Later, I will tell maybe about the journalist club that I was fortunate, thanks to you, to visit. But before we kind of start to speak about technology and science and art, can you introduce yourself briefly? Yeah, I'm working at Axel Springer, which is a, a huge publishing group, media company, um, and I'm in charge for the venture business. So we have been investing into startup companies since 2012. And I have another hat on uh, today. So we are ramping up a new academy, which is called the Free Tech Academy for Journalism and Technology. Maybe we also have time to talk about this. Yeah. So you have kind of a lot of leading roles in Axel Springer, the managing director of the Digital Ventures and the founding director of the Free Tech. But the reason I wanted to speak with you is another project that you actually started, which is the Axel Springer Plug and Play Accelerator. Now, we're already familiar with the concept of startup accelerators around the world, but you decided also to bring art into this program. Can you actually maybe briefly describe how the program looks from a startup point of view? And then I'm very much interested to understand why art in a startup accelerator? Yeah. When we started it in 2013, it was like inviting young companies um, or founders about to start a company 10 at a time in our premises and work with them the next three months on the future of their business. So we were investors and I would say mentors to them. So today the program has slightly changed. So it's not these 10 at a time. So it's a more continuous rolling business, but at the end, it's the same. So you have first time founders quite often and first time founders they are facing the first time the same problems. We think uh, we can make them faster. So and and more professional and um, and ready for the next stage of investment. So in the venture business, you start getting capital um, from outside. In this case, um, from us. But until the company is really successful, you might need millions or hundreds of millions. And then at the end, it might be a successful, huge company and a unicorn. And one of the companies is N26. And it's clearly now a unicorn. So, and they started, the two of them, they started um, on premises. Congratulations. 
what is the role of the artist in this program? How does it look? We did it in a way that uh, we invited them as artists in residence. So that's how we call them. And they got a desk like uh, the startups in the middle, right in the middle of the startup. So nothing special about it. And they were part of At that time, part of the batch and, and worked on what they wanted to work. And that's important. And we might go deeper into that. And, and for me, um, I have learned in several occasions how useful it can be to look at the arts, at the artists. So when it comes to creating something new, thinking beyond uh, the boundaries. And I think the artist can also learn a lot from business people. doing something similar, yeah. So I'm very much interested, Uli. You have a scientific background. How did you find yourself in the world of art? Oh, that's, that's an interesting question. I started electrical engineering and it starts quite abstract. So it's, it's a lot of theory. Um, I was lucky. I found my place at, at an institute which was very much into the methodology of development on art. mechanics or uh, micro mechanics electronics and software and when it came to creativity uh, creativity methods it's not so far to, to, to arts and art gives you a lot of inspirations and that was one thing another thing was so I thought the wells I also need to To buy arts and I had a had a job and wrote for a trade magazine so earned some money with it and I put it aside and decided to buy a piece of arts so when I saw it and I wanted to have it so, but at the end I found out I'm not a collector so I'm aware more interested in the process rather than really possessing it and honestly I think you can't own a piece of art so yeah. it's impossible to own it yeah it's <laughs> I love I love it you know um, because I always interested in the artist not yeah. necessarily the artworks I have to have the conversation with the artist if I were to get a piece of art because I'm much more interested in the ways of thinking rather than just the end result which is the object yeah which, which is also um, okay so that there is an object and people can pay for it but but I thought well it's not about collecting it it's about interaction and I learned a lot in one job that was kind of a think tank again for a technology company and in that think tank we started working with with artists and not in a way of getting a nice decoration for the walls but in a way of understanding how the other party worked so we invited them to To do something so they did something and it was always useful to put another point so there is not this single trigger I have a lot of friends who are artists my brother-in-law Philip Geist he is a, a light artist international light artist so I know more about the way and the hard work the artists do yeah to, to achieve <laughs> what well, an engineer might think the world so I I would love to work like them so I make a nice drawing so and and then I sell it and it's the opposite yeah Uli <laughs> when I listening to you it's like I know why we got connected it's like it's, like, it's yeah. so funny the consensus that people have when they think about artists you know these lazy the one that have siesta that work whenever they want without understanding that majority of the artists that I met are such a hard worker are so focused I mean they work day in day out for years about projects and there is a beautiful quote by an artist that actually said that being an artist is not 10 years career it's a the long-term yeah. career absolutely and and that's coming back to my to my engineering background um, and when I started the engineer said I thought isn't it a mistake what I do so isn't it too limited and I learned that Um, also a lot you're absolutely not limited you limit yourself so even if you <laughs> you do construction of a bridge um, so I never did it um, or a piece of technology so there is a lot of freedom in terms of what solution you pick what technology you take what materials and so first you can broaden it up to the product and to the use case and typically you 
you have a lot more freedom than you think. And at the end, so when you really want to bring an idea into implementation, you have to be absolutely focused. And that's the same an artist does. But I think most people could do everything, but they don't. So for some reason, they pick something. Yes, you want to earn money, but many people look looking also for purpose. So the difference between the work and the possibility of an artist and of people in another business are not so huge. So when it comes to freedom and at the end to focus, to resilience, and also to maybe selling it, yeah, it's a business. It, you are touching a very interesting point because I want to ask you something. I'm positive there are listeners now that listening to us and say, you know, I'm working in a huge corporation. There are the rules, etc. I don't have freedom. So what would you tell them? Don't limit yourself. You have a couple of choices. In many larger corporations or smaller environments, you have a lot more freedom than you think. It's about to explore it. You can just adapt, but maybe you're not happy with it. You can leave that the other choice, but normally you can change your environment, maybe not from one day to the other. And you can even do that as an intern. So we had interns um, at the end presenting in their first weeks to the board and bringing up an idea. So that's too easy to tell. I have no choice. Um, you have a lot of choices. Normally. I think that that's also something that defines artists, experimentation, you know, yeah. uh, trying different things. So I want to go back to the think tank you mentioned. And you invited artists and you obviously from listening to you, you had more internal passion to the arts. I wonder how artists influence or not your colleague in the think tank. How did they respond to the fact that artists are there? For me, the most surprising aspect was as one colleague at a time was very much in technology and um, you could literally only talk about technology with him. So, and he connected so close with the artists and he became kind of a promoter of the idea. And what I've learned is that people, and I'm including myself, need maybe more ways to get in touch with arts. And once you get in touch, be touched by the art, you might not understand everything, but you feel it and you feel something. So, and you get an inspiration or it gives you food for thought or for discussion. And I, for me, it was something I wanted to bring more people to it. And when it comes to the results, they are hard to measure. It's hard to measure. So is the product, which was created at that time, really a better product. But in the process, I saw a lot of new inspiration and it, I think it was absolutely worth it. That's a great, great point. You just said you cannot measure it. Now, both of us working in the world of business, KPIs, OKRs, Matrix, Unit Economics, everything toward the number. And when you want to tell people and managers and leaders, you should have artists in your organization, the question that they ask you, what is the impact? What is the answer from your perspective? What is the impact? For me, it's, it's the same when it comes to a couple of measures towards innovation management. So if you have a lab or a group of people thinking about new things, so that's something which is accountable and you can measure the output. So even there, so you can't often directly say so well. So that's a success of this group because this, this would mean this group brings it to an end. And um, I think it's quite normal when it comes to, uh, to innovation and we can call it sometimes R&D. So there is a form of R&D, which you can really, um, really measure. So by number of patents or so number of projects and so forth. But there is a lot more, also a lot more in culture, which is really hard to measure. And that's the same with arts. Arts, you can see arts as a cultural aspect. And, and again, I'm not talking about uh, decorating the walls. So I'm, I'm talking about kind of an interaction. Um, where you might measure at the end a number of, of ideas um, or satisfaction of employees, 
but it's a, re a result. I think you also have to believe in it. Um, and in a cultural change, you also have to believe it's not completely measurable. So, And I think um, if you lead a company, so you can do it by numbers, uh, but you also have to do it by, by a vision and you do it um, maybe with a calculator, but also with a gut. Um, and you need people having this in, in a gut feeling. And maybe we, we could, do scientific research, and I would love to read it, where you compare companies um, interacting with artists and not, but I don't need it. Yeah, it's what I called, you know, always we need the execution, but also the imagination, the art mindset with the entrepreneurship capabilities. And when you think about measuring, maybe in the results, it's just enough to look at uh, Brown, the German company, and Apple and uh, Pixar to see how creativity and art that were so integrated in those companies actually led to so many uh, successes. Uli, let's take a short break and we'll continue to talk about the Startup Accelerator. Would you like to work personally with Nier to develop and grow your artistic mindset? At the Artian, we work with organizations and individuals to achieve greater success. Through our art-based leadership sales and innovation training, we show organizations that there is another way of thinking and another possibility of acting. Visit us at www.theartian.com. That is T-H-E-A-R-T-I-A-N.com to learn more. Great. So, Uli, we were just discussing how important it is maybe to leave aside measurement when it comes to art. And I want to go back to the accelerator. Why did you want it to bring an artist to sit next to those entrepreneurs? We had the feeling it will make something with the artist and with uh, the entrepreneurs. At the end, we thought of better results for both sides, um, a better understanding these visionary thinking and this performance in implementing each part can learn from, from each other. In a startup environment, it's also about learning and it's about confrontation with things which work and uh, those which doesn't. So we were so convinced that it would do something and yeah, well, we just wanted to do it and figure it out. And it was an experiment um, like the whole accelerator, which was the first one we built uh, for our company. It was at a time where not so many uh, were um, already in, in Germany and it was an experiment in itself. And we added something else where we were convinced of. And I told you why, because of the former experiences. And we had another thing. So we, we took... Um, an office um, so, which was used by an artist as a workshop, and he also left something. I think um, we would have had another, a completely different start without him. And um, you were there, I think, um, also in the accelerator, so it looked a bit wild. And it was absolutely no decoration, and we leave everything, and it did something with the people. And then we professionalized it somewhat. And there's another interesting point. When we started it, we didn't know how. I never wanted to come in the situation that we cast artists, so as art interested people, so in this, that you say, so well, so this picture looks nicer than the other, so let's in, invite this or that person. So it was important for us to professionalize here. So we were professionals in terms of, uh, yeah, working with startup companies, having the pitches from them, so judging and decide in whom to invest. And we wanted to be as professional with the artists. So we teamed up with the gallery, so Eigenet Art Labs um, here in Berlin, and they helped us a lot in finding artists and it was a great dialogue at each batch. Yeah, I remember that when I visited you, you mentioned uh, an artist, uh, Liat Segal, that actually was part of the Accelerator. And she was also a guest on this uh, podcast, actually in the second episode. And I asked her specifically about her experience at Axel Springer. Let's hear what she said about that. Okay, yeah. It was first an incredible experience from two directions. The first one is just as an artist, I think that... 
most artists that do this project don't come from a technological background and still have this beautiful conversation with people that come from places that are different from them. I really loved the people that I worked with. It was a really a beautiful mutual war to fight, you know? So that was one thing. But generally speaking, I can say that this environment that makes people from different disciplines with different motivation work together at, most of the time you don't have a lot of conversation about the art or about the startups, you know, like people do what they do. But just being there and speaking about life and getting to know each other makes some difference because when people, startup people talk to startup people they will speak mostly about tech <laughs> and when it's an artist that suddenly is a bit an outsider to this the, suddenly the, the environment the changes shifts. yeah it shifts exactly and it creates something else and I think that that's one of the most the greatest powers of having an artist in residence in a very technological environment Uli I'm interested what surprised you? the most about having an artist with the entrepreneurs because you already had experiences so but now you see them from the outside in a way yeah. how normal it is yeah and an artist is also a businessman or businesswoman so and and they sit there and work um, or do their work like like the others so it's on one hand the normality on the other hand it's the observation of the artist regarding the work of the, the startups and vice versa so they see different aspects then they have to find a language and as I said before it's also interesting to whom people connect and And there are a lot of surprises in it. And I think it's, it's a full mixture. So some, it was maybe just another person in the room, yeah. which was an odd or crazy <laughs> business. Yeah. But that happened between the startups as well. So, and, and for others, they were really interested in it and tried to learn a lot um, of it. And there was this idea and think in terms of freedom of thinking and, you can learn a lot from from artists um, but you can also a lot in terms of um, hard work and dedication to a specific goal you can learn a lot about values and the artist can also learn a lot about performance um, from the others and in many cases about marketing so that's some uh, one thing where I think many of the artists are have a problem with it uh, so with telling a price or selling it um, or even talking about it but I think it's important and there's nothing bad about it yeah, yeah. when I spoke uh, with Lia she mentioned she also needed to present in the demo day like the startups Absolutely. and one of the things she did for them is a kind of a workshop on Arduino because she worked with technology so it's very interesting this intersection um, one of the things that I find odd is that we still think about artists as painters, but artists are people that work with so many materials and normally they are the one that explore new technologies as well as new materials. Uli, I want to go back to something you said when I asked you about what surprised you about the artist and entrepreneur. You said it was normal. Yeah. And my question is, For you, Uli, is if it's that normal and you and I believe it's normal, why the business environment and technology environment still separate? One thing is uh, still the accountability. So it's hard to measure. So you, you need a certain belief in it. And another thing is, I think there are still a lot of people who need more access to art and understanding people. beyond the piece um, on the wall or on the screen and and that's something it's you always find people uh, being interested in art in arts but but even they sometimes don't dare to bring it to business so there is some barrier which I don't understand it might be it's it's sometimes the same in music so it was With classical music and maybe um, pop rock so there is maybe also some barriers so, and for some the business is classic and the other is pop and it could be also the, the other way around and it's ridiculous at the end but 
I think it's a step-by-step -step approach. So, and I'm really uh, glad that you took on this, also this role to bring it to business and, and see that it's not about being funky or meeting the side guys so that you have to do <laughs> something um, or that you have to come uh, to outperform another collector. It's something which has to be taken uh, seriously. And, and that's, well, we, maybe we have to bring it to the business schools as well. Yeah, which which we did uh, by the way once. So that was a funny yeah project. So I gave a lesson at that time at the um, RWTH Aachen, so which is a, an engineering university um, on development of product or product innovation, and so we teamed up with with another engineer who was also an artist. And we had a lesson on it. So we compared the work of an engineer and of an artist. So and he, because he was both, he was a great role, role model for it. But I think that was just one afternoon. But I think we need more of these afternoons. Yeah. First of all, I think you will be happy to know that uh, one of the podcast uh, guests is Danica Perg, and she is the founder of a business school in uh, Slovenia that actually integrated art from 1985. She already oh, wow. integrated. Yeah. yeah, she's a great model. So I want to continue because I think that if business people or professional or leaders will understand that art, and you said it beautifully, it's about learning about values. It's about vision. It's about inspiration. It's about dedication. It's about focus. It's not about putting a paint on a canvas. All of those things. So I'm now business professional. I'm a manager. I'm listening to you. You convinced me. Now I want to ask you, what are the tips you will give someone that want to bring artists into their organization in order to make it a successful collaboration? What are the things that you think are important from your experience doing it so many years? Yeah. Take it as serious as your business. So that's one thing. So don't even think about having a playground um, or something like that. And on the other hand is allow yourself also a trial and, and error, like in business and an openness and to find your own way. And I think that's the same when it comes to innovation, disruptive innovation. So I'm not talking about the daily improvement. I'm not talking about the next product generation. So I'm talking about disruption. You can't plan it. And there is no a role model which you copy and paste. Find your own way. So And find somebody supporting you that can be, in our case, it was a gallery. And then... We went our first step, but you do the steps, but you do the same when you start a dis disruptive innovation project, when you do it right. And don't stop it after the first attempt. So continue, learn. It's a continuous uh, learning. And that's the way, way I would do it. So I would watch out for somebody supporting me in that case. And we did the same. Yeah, we, we had the idea but it wouldn't have happened without the guys from the Island Art Labs. Yeah, so they helped us so, so much. Uli, you're kind of an example to what I always say. For me, there is no such thing, innovative and creative companies. They don't exist. For me, there are only innovative and creative people that build innovative <laughs> yeah. and creative right. companies. And I always say that every time you will see a creative company, there is a first name and last name behind it. It's not the organization is specific people that set the vision to shape these companies as such and actually go and get it. And I think everything you mentioned is like straight to the point. Take it as a serious as business, trial and error, openness, find your own way. You cannot plan it. That's why it's so funny for me when people tell me, yeah, we are planning this innovation project and we know uh, how if, if it's you're already planning it so it's not innovation someone did it and you just follow the steps so many great advices i want to speak with you now about your new initiative the free tech academy what is this free tech academy and why do you think we even need one it's a part of our transformation process um axel springer when i joined it it was a mainly a print publisher over the last one two decades it, it transformed into a um, real digital business and 
In the digital business, um, it's driven by technology. The problem was, and in many cases still is, mass media always was technology. And so the, the tech understanding, it's everywhere, but it's not that present. We wanted to, to make it more present. And Axel Springer yeah, gave itself a claim, so being a, a media and technology company. And we have since long, uh, for the media part, um, for the journalistic part, a very well-known uh, journalist academy, the Axel Springer Academy. And there, people had the idea so well, so then we need a tech uh, academy. So if we thought about it, uh, that might be possible, but there you if you want to study tech, you can do a lot outside. Um, why building it? And while thinking about it, um, we thought it's again bringing people together. So we talked about bringing artists and, and entrepreneurs together. And here, I think when it comes to the core media part, it's also about to bring journalists and tech people together. So they work together, but they often have even difficult to, to find the right language to talk together and create really on eye level the media of the future. So, and, and that was the idea to, to bring it um, together. Why it's called free tech? It's not to get technology for free. Um, <laughs> and and um, I think if Axel Springer stands for one thing, then it's standing for freedom and for free press. And with people who give their freedom for it, who give their lives to fight for it. And we thought, well, it's not about another form of education. So you find a lot out there. We want to bring people together to work on freedom, to help others to make freely the right decisions. I think journalism stands a lot of for it, but also technology. So and and then we we didn't name it John Tech. <laughs> so we, we took free tech. And it's about to bring these groups together. And not in a way, and that might be a similarity to the artist in residence and um, the entrepreneurs. It's not that the entrepreneurs learn painting <laughs> so or the artists um, write business plans. Um, and here it's not that um, all journalists can uh, do coding and the coders write um, or do videos. So it's about getting an understanding. So seeing that you together can achieve a lot more rather than doing it just in your silo. Yeah. And that's the idea of it. Yeah. Great. Uli, I'm so much uh, enjoyed this conversation. I think you are a great representation for the business leaders that at least I'm looking up to. You know, often when I speak about these topics, People think, okay, it's just something that we leave to other uh, departments, but uh, you as the founding director of the Free Tech and the co-founder of the Axel Springer Accelerator and the managing director of the Digital Ventures and your role as a, in science and R&D is like... Yeah, forget about the titles. So they're not important um, at, at that time. So it's... And um, I don't want to bind it too much to, uh, to to me as a person. So it's a true interaction of, of like-minded people. Uh, and like-minded people doesn't mean um, they're all similar thinkers. So it's yeah. there's a lot of controversy uh, going on. But um, we all have the, the same goal. So and I think modern form... Oh, modern for modern is, uh, is is a word which is always has been always used. So, <laughs> I think it's not important that one single person says so. We do this, we do that. It's important um, to gather a group, a critical mass um, of of people, and give them f freedom to work, and and something um, will happen. And this is fortunately the case here, and that's something which I really appreciate uh, within the company. But it wasn't there. People also had to demand for to ask for it um, or not even to ask it, just to take it. Yes, And I think you can um, build similar uh, ways of, of action thinking also in other companies. You just have to dare it. I'm totally with you on the, the title thing. I think what your titles bring is to show 
that in any level of the organization, commitment can be found. It's just a matter of decision. To say that I take it, just as you said, as a serious business, understanding that it's important to the people, to the environment, to the culture, to the inspiration, to the vision. All of those things that we cannot measure, but we are so much want them and so looking for them. And you find it, you find a lot more um, and it's so inspiring so, to work with, uh, with with great people from different professions, full diversity and in, in the best meaning yeah um, and um, and that's something so which gives me energy. Great. Willie, thank you very, very much for taking the time to speak with me. I really enjoyed this conversation. Yes, yeah, th thank you for the discussion. so it, it's great and I learn a lot too by being asked. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. All the, the links to everything uh, Uli mentioned will be on the show notes. Make sure to check them out. Uli, once again, thank you very much. Thank you. I really hope you enjoyed this conversation with Uli, as I did. He is the type of business leaders I always seek. His ideas to add to the business education courses that include arts are spawned on. I see the influence on my students in my own courses in IE Business School, where I teach. We are finishing the first part of the season today. We already had 15 episodes in this part of the year, with many more coming in the fall. The summer break is a great time to check the ones you might have missed. And summer is already here, and we want to wish you a great summer vacation. After long months of being apart, I will visit my family and I can't wait to see my nephews. I hope you will enjoy your families and beloved ones as well. We will be back in the fall with more exciting and inspiring people you can learn from. It is an excellent opportunity to thank you, our listeners, for sticking with us. We really appreciate your reviews and ratings. It really helps. And if you haven't had the opportunity to give us a review or rating, please consider doing so. Thanks to Abigail Dyson, our intern, who helped us put the message out there. Thanks to Daniel Duan, who mixed and mastered these episodes. And big thanks to the speakers, who took their time to share their thoughts, ideas, stories, and tips with us. See you in the fall for more episodes of the RTN Podcast with me, Nir Hindi. Once again, thanks for listening.